Thank you for joining us Around the Fire. For more information or to make a donation, please visit randomactnetwork.com. Now, want to hear a scary story? This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So, you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall, rock-climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So, whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. This is Black Friday from More Scary Stories. It started as a normal day. It was bitterly cold, even as the sun appeared, and Haddington's only department store was gearing up for the Black Friday rush to begin at 6 a.m. sharp. The store's customers were known to pound on the doors before opening, even on a regular day, so the staff knew to be prepared for the worst. Or so they thought. First in line was an older woman, Margot, with her steaming cup of tea in hand. Everyone at the store knew Margot. She always had something to complain about, some expired coupon to demand using. She spent her time waiting in line, complaining to those around her that the store should open early for them due to the cold. No one responded. Further back in the line was a father and his son, Toby. Toby's dad was headed to the electronics to find a flat screen TV but Toby would be headed to the toys to get the remote control car he'd seen all the commercials for. Behind them was Tina, a single woman in her 30s. She planned to hit every department she could, and she had her list ready. As the opening time grew closer, the crowd grew more and more impatient. A few minutes before the doors opened, the speakers kicked on, and a cheerful Christmas tune echoed through the parking lot. The energy shifted as the customers watched the employees make their final preparations through the windows. And then the doors separated. The sign lit up. The store was now open. Margot used her bony elbows to make sure nobody beat her to the discounted purses she had her eyes on. She grabbed several, leaving very few for anyone else, and began heading back to the registers to beat the lines. Toby hadn't seen his father since they first entered the store, and he couldn't see anything in the massive stampede of adults. Though he was overwhelmed, he kept his mind on that car. Tina had planned to go to the electronics first, but as she entered the anarchy of the store, she made the swift decision that her father's gift would take priority. She planned to get him the newest, biggest capacity, shiniest blender you can get. She squeezed her way through the crowd toward the appliances. These were the final moments that resembled anything like a typical Black Friday. Margot made it to the register and plopped the bags down without saying a word. After the final bag was scanned, she took out her credit card to pay. Was it a gust of wind? Or maybe it was her frail, wrinkly hands. Something happened and she dropped the card. As she bent over to grab it from the floor, her gaudy necklace triggered the conveyor belt to move forward. Her entire tiny body lurched toward the cashier, who screamed and pulled at the jewelry to no avail. Margot desperately grabbed at her throat to remove the necklace, but it was too tight. She was flailing, choking, desperate to breathe. Her face turned from white to red to purple, and she flailed less and less. The conveyor belt kept pulling and pulling. The gears chewed past the necklace and began feasting on her wrinkly skin. In a matter of seconds, her entire face was pulled off like a sticky Halloween mask, squishing into the gears and spraying blood in every direction. Finally, the belt caught the gray hair she had pulled into a bun and removed it at once, disappearing into the machine like it hadn't eaten in days. For a moment, the rest of her lingered there, half collapsed by the register, 
From the shoulders up, she was nothing but bloody bone other than her eyes, which made piercing contact with those screaming around her. But the rest of the store was distracted because it wasn't just the conveyor belt that suddenly became deadly. It was everything. The motorized scooters near the entrance were driving around aimlessly, mowing down whatever and whoever was in their paths. Back in the appliances, nearly everything had turned on at once. Hands and faces were filleted away by blenders and electric knives. Shelves collapsed, littering the floor with butcher knives and cheese graters, ready to destroy whatever flesh that found its way to them. Everywhere, bloody bodies tripped and tangled with each other. Tina could see all this happening from the frozen food aisle. She hadn't made it to appliances yet when it all started happening, and now she was stood in the middle of the freezer section. She was desperate to find a way to escape a store where everything had seemingly come to life with a desire to kill. Toby was in the toys with a few other kids when it started happening. Heavy boxes were lurching from the shelves, the toys loudly honking and singing. Shortly before the chaos began, Toby had made eye contact with a cute young girl on the other side of the aisle near the dolls. Now he watched as she was swiftly crushed by the children's playset crashing down from the display above the aisle. Toby had to get to his dad. He turned around to find a way out of the aisle when he stopped in his tracks. Ten feet away was a fleet of remote control cars, although no one was controlling them, of course. Normally, they looked fun and exciting. Now, they were menacing. Toby wasn't a big kid, and with so many of them, he didn't have a chance. As they sped towards him, he turned and ran as fast as he could, quickly hitting the dead end that was created by the falling playset. He tried to find a way to climb it, but he couldn't find anything to hold. At the very last second, Toby jumped onto the shelf, holding onto the metal prongs displaying trading cards. The cars slammed into the playset with exploding bits of metal and plastic flying in every direction. Toby climbed to the top of the shelf and observed the crowd. He immediately knew he was never finding his father. Tina had finally left the freezer section, but now found herself near the produce. It seemed like the best route to the front doors. She didn't notice that the automatic sprayers above the fruit had gone into hyperdrive, soaking everything around them. Crying, she climbed past the overturned carts and the bodies of those run down by the scooters. She didn't see the puddle ahead of her, and her foot slipped the second it attempted touchdown. She landed hard on her back, immediately soaked. A few feet away, the water found its way to the tongue of an extension cord. Tina was killed instantly, along with the dozens of others who were t attempting to cross the water or touching anything metal nearby. Toby stood at the front of the aisle, watching people trampling over each other, breaking bones and cracking skulls against the floor. The entire grocery section was sparking and crackling, and dozens of bodies trembled in a disturbing electric dance. The sparks were starting to reach the dry goods. Toby knew it was a matter of moments before there would be a fire. His dad would expect him to get out. It would be impossible to try and find him now. Toby observed the bloodshed once more, trying to predict the best route of exit. Only then did he notice the people strung up to the ceiling like ornaments, tangled up in Christmas lights with blue and purple faces. Were the objects moving? If he didn't go now, he'd never make it. He'd have to use his small size to his advantage. He reached over and untangled a string of lights from the display of bodies and wrapped the cord up in his hands. He needed to stay as high as possible for as long as possible. He jumped from the aisle top, swinging above the panicked customers, desperately trying to escape. He let go at the last possible second and hit the tile only a few feet from the registers. On his left, he could see straight into the garden center, though he wished he never looked. The mowers and saws were having a holiday of their own. The walls were painted deep red and mangled limbs and dismembered bodies decorated the ground. Toby stayed low, crawling under the registers. He wanted nothing 
He wanted to do nothing more than stand up and sprint, but he had no idea what was waiting for him past the checkout area. It was getting really warm and harder to breathe. The fire was starting to consume the back half of the store. Toby cleared the registers and stood fully up for the first time. The sliding glass doors were right there, opening and closing quickly like the jaws of a giant metal monster. He picked up a shelf from the floor and started running. Whatever came flying at him, he batted away with his makeshift shield. Without even meaning to, he was screaming as loud as he could. As he made it to the entrance, he threw the shelf in between the angry doors, causing a temporary jam. He turned and yelled for others to follow that the doors were open, but there was no one even close. He ran through the doors and kept going until he got to the very last parking spot and collapsed, coughing and crying in the freezing morning air. Toby surveyed the lot. Other than the violent noises leaking from the store, the outside felt rather normal. A gentle snow fell from the sky. Toby knew his father was already dead. There were only a few survivors. They all told the same story, but it didn't matter. Authorities called it a group hallucination caused by smoke inhalation. The store had simply caught fire, they said, and most of the customers died in the panic to get out. But the survivors knew better, and Haddington outlawed Black Friday after that. The official word was that it was out of respect for the hundreds who had died, but those who knew the truth understood that it was a way of making sure it never happened again. But of course, they couldn't be sure of that. Toby turned and left the parking lot, walking along the barren sidewalk towards home. Police cars passed him on their way to the store, and he could hear the fire trucks in the distance. As he rounded the corner into his cul-de-sac, it was nearly silent. The fluffy snow acted as a sponge to the sound, and Toby could only hear the crunching below his sneakers. What was he going to tell his mom? But then he started hearing something else. A familiar, high-pitched electric hum. Breathing deep, he turned around. Just a few feet behind him was a remote control car, ready to hit the gas. Thanks.